time is 3pm on a uh, Thursday the 27th of August 2020 now we're going to follow up DLA call centre on the following number which is 0800 121 4600 so I'm now going to follow up this particular number to see what the issues are checking the actual caller ID log it seems that I made a phone call something like three weeks ago at 11.28 a.m. on a Tuesday the 28th of July 2020 where after being kept on the phone for 40 minutes and 9 seconds the call was disconnected afterwards with no sensible answer and all it's a matter of doing is pressing a few buttons on a computer keypad and then just authorising my benefits to be restored to my bank account afterwards so like I said I'm now going to phone up the DLA call centre on the number that I've given which is 0800 121 46 double zero Welcome to the Disability Living Allowance Helpline, part of the Department for Work and Pensions. This is a free call. If your date of birth is on or before 8th of April 1948, please read our 0800 731 0122. The number again is 0800 731 0122. If you have made a claim for personal independence payment and want to tell us of a change or have a question, please read our 0800 121 4433. The number again, 0800 121 4433. If you are calling about your motability lease or vehicle, please call Motability Operations on 0300 456 4566. The number again is 0300 456 4566. If you wish to claim for someone under 16 and are not already in receipt of disability living allowance, you can request a claim pack by pressing 1, or you can find a claim pack online at www.gov.uk to report a death or check what help may be available following a bereavement. Press 2. If you are calling regarding someone under 16, press 3. For someone over 16, press 4. If you are inquiring about or wish to make a claim for personal independence payment, press 1. If your date of birth is on or before the 8th of April 1948, please press 2. If you are phoning regarding your disability living allowance, please press 3. Thank you. Most people who get disability living allowance are paid every four weeks on a Wednesday. Your bank statement will show you when your last payment was made. You can use this to work out when your next payment will be. You may find it helpful to make a note of when your payments will be on a calendar or diary. We're currently experiencing high call volumes. You may prefer to call back later. Your call may be recorded today. We will treat your personal information carefully. We may use it for any of our purposes. To learn about your information rights and how we use information, please see our personal information charter at gov.uk. hold and your call will be answered as soon as possible. It would be useful if you have your national insurance number available for when we answer your call. Thank you for waiting. We will answer your call as soon as possible.
If you are calling about when you will next be paid, most people are paid every four weeks on a Wednesday. We've reached Department for Work and Pensions, Blackpool Benefit Services. My name is Louise. May I take the claimant's surname, please? Hello, eventually, um, just let me say, I'll put this to one side a second. My my surname, which is my last name, isn't it? It is. Uh, do you not want my national insurance number instead? Uh, I do, but I need both, please. You need my surname and my national insurance number? Yeah, please. My, my surname is Kane, it's spelled C-A-I-N-E. Thank you. And my national insurance number is NM36. 0897D. Thank you. Just repeat that for you. So NM three six O eight nine seven D Delta. Correct. What I need to ask Thank is you. check in the last previous telephone call to uh, yourselves at DWP. Um, I made a phone call on the eleven twenty eight AM on Tuesday the twenty eighth of July and this is like almost like three weeks away and the admin issues haven't been dealt with in three weeks. Right, okay, let me have a look for you then. So can you just confirm, I just need to take you through security questions first and then I can access the system for you. So may I just take your date of birth first of all? And my date of birth is the 20th of August 1966. Thank you. Can I ask what rates or amounts you get on the DLA at the moment? At the moment? Uh, yeah. What you've done, you've actually reduced the money, which means in total, total terms, you've reduced it from exactly £601 a month loss in benefit money. So what you're paying me at the moment, the only existing money going to the bank account, every fortnight you're paying £261.30. Right, thank you. And that's your DLA, is it? No, the un you've, stopped no. The, you've stopped the DLA and not reinstated it. Right, can you just tell me what you're entitled to then? What what you're entitled to? Not so much what you're getting, just what your entitlement is. What did we award you? Well, already on your computer systems, you know the actual losses and, and distress are here, the home address and the expense issues, because I, I basically got like a gas bill that I can't afford to pay. I've also got distress and appliances and, and other types of distress here at the home, home situations and also, uh, what else? Um, the bank account resembles something that somebody would find in the 1920s or 30s because a lot of years ago I had healthy responsible wages and I didn't have a poverty bank account statement. Right, can I just ask you, it's just to get you through security that's all so I can answer your questions. So can you just tell me what you're entitled to on the DLA? On your systems that you were previously paid regularly with no distress here at the home address for a number of years in the past where everything was 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 responsibly stable and looked visually stable and was healthily stable a lot of years ago cause, because the government managed to do this a lot of years ago and it certainly didn't look like it what it does today. So, so what, what what I'm basically entitled to, I believe, by the laws etched in stone, would be a DLA of three hundred thirty three pound twenty pence a month, and then previously you, you've reworded the benefits. So previously I was on income support and incapacity benefit. So what you've reworded the benefit to now is e ESA, which is three hundred, which should be three hundred ninety five pound twenty every two weeks. Okay, can you just confirm for me? Just bear with me. So, so like I said, in real terms, what you've what you've actually done for me is sadly, sadly, you reduced the money going to the bank account of six hundred and one pound monthly loss, and also the home address has sustained damage and loss and tragedy here. And, and also appliances don't work, expensive appliances don't work, and the conditions look like something resembling the 1920s or 30s. And, and also, what, what I'm trying to say to you, under a previous government, the visual audio, visual audio issues here would not look, would not look like they do today. Okay, just tell me what your, um, can you remember what ward you were on when you were in hospital? I can remember, it was Saxon Ward, there's also a website and you do an internet research of psychiatric patients blog, you can try and read the issues on there afterwards, because it's somewhat worse, worse there than what it is here. Can you just confirm your address for me? 
Well, it's already on the system, isn't it? Yeah, it's just I want you to confirm it for me, if you can, just to make sure we've got the right details. Right, the home address is 5 Richmond Street, Lancashire, OL670X. Lovely, thank you. Right, OK, so that, let me just have a look for you. The reason why it hasn't been put back into payment yet is because we needed, um, we had to verify some hospital dates. So they've gone through to the decision maker now and they'll just be dealing with it for you. Right, um, can, whenever I've, I've actually got the piece of paper over here on this second. Yeah, it's all, it's all right. The, the decision maker's got them anyway. So uh, basically, it's gone through to the decision maker. When an, when anything affects the payability of, a, of um, the benefit, we have to make a decision on it. And so basically, they're just looking into it because we just had to verify a few um, details regarding the dates of the hospital stay. Well, I've, I've um, got that's got, why got, got you haven't the, been got, paid yet. But you've, you've, you've had the information. After the last phone call previously was like three weeks ago. Yeah, but sometimes we have to confirm it, though. Well, I can give you the details now that you supposedly have had three weeks ago. What the information... Right, well, that's... What I'm trying to say, you know, on the information that I'm looking at, on the documentation, the admission date was, it was the 2nd of August 2019, and the freedom date was the 22nd of July 2020. The home leave was the 21st of August 2019 till the 8th of October 2020. And also, the, the, the other home leave was the 2nd of July 2020 to the 15th of July 2020, followed by the previous home leave of the 17th of July 2020, followed by the 22nd of, of July 2020. And this admin issue has been dealt with by Claire Feckett, uh, C-L-A-I-R-E, Feckett, spelled F-E-K-E-T-E. Now, this lady's position is the ward clerk of Saxon Ward, so she's managed to type the information on the piece of paper that I've got here that you should otherwise have received. And what I'm trying to say, if you've not got these details, I can repeat them now, and you can type them on the keypad or write them down. Uh, no, I think we've got them, that's okay. Um, they did go through, like I say, to the decision maker, so we're just dealing with it at the moment. If you can just bear with us, as soon as we've made, um, we've sorted all that out for you, we will send it out for you. And what I need to ask is, would that be a registration of an actually money amount to my account, or would it be a postal letter saying that there'd perhaps be more difficulties? Uh, no, it will be um, monetary amount to you. Once they've sorted these payments out, they will um, send the um, amount to your account. They also will um, send you a letter as well, just to, to verify that. Right. What I was going to say was rather than send a paper letter that's costing like 20, 30 pence for a stamp and like one sheet of A4 paper, like inexpensive paper, obviously not not concrete paper, watermarked and all the rest of it, an inexpensive piece of copy of paper is like four pence, followed by an envelope of like 10 or 15 pence. Do you not just want to send me an, an electronic mail instead? Uh, we don't do emails at the moment. They're not secure enough, so we don't we don't deal with them at the minute. Well, not even post is secure enough, though, is it? I mean, you, you can well, also, you, no, can but you can also encrypt yeah. the actual message on the email. Yeah, but at the moment we just we deal with letters at the minute. Right, because I, I would get the message faster with email, but it, and it would be cheaper than just sending out a piece of. Yeah, paper I'm, sh I'm sure you would, but unfortunately we don't deal with it that, in that in that yeah. format. Right, what I was going to say was, like I said, the fax machine technology going back to 1975 would have been a good idea on Saxon Ward and your department to relay the information over to you. So I can't understand why like a, a three week admin issue has taken so long. I mean, it wouldn't perhaps take that long amount of time like 50 or 60 years ago in the days of GPO telephones. So what I was going to say was, um, I can't understand why this admin issue has taken this amount of time. Um, as I say, because we have to confirm with the hospital, so we have to, sometimes we have to have the confirmation through and it just takes a little while to process. Obviously, you can imagine it's not just yourself that we're dealing with, there's a lot of them, you know, other people as well that we're dealing with, so it, it does take a little while. It's not, you know, um, if you can just bear with us, we will let you know. 
Do you know when, when the actual money will be paid? To, is it with the your your term can your word conditions of the decision maker? So, so what I need to ask. Is the actual um, is that another department that makes a decision on on, on accounting the money to the bank or whatever afterwards? No, it's the decision maker from this department. We'll sort it all out, and then they will um, just issue the payment once they've sorted it. Well, have you any idea how long that would take, please? I don't, because uh, as you say, it has been three weeks, so um, it has been been with the decision maker for a few days. So hopefully, it shouldn't be too much longer for you to wait now. Okay, well, I'll monitor the account and I'll, I'll, I'll check for any, any postal correspondence. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, thank then. You. Thank Bye. you very much for your call today. Bye-bye.